What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how to use HTTP client in order to get an HTML response. This will be a really quick video so try and follow along and if you need to pause it feel free to. So I'm going to create a new project and I will be doing this with the console app on the .NET Core. So I will just press next. I'm going to name my project HTTP client underscore app and hit enter and create it with .NET Core 3.1. So now that we have our projects generated, we're going to need to add a couple of namespaces. So the namespaces that you're going to need are system.threading.tasks, system.net.http, and system .net, just system.net. And then I'm also going to add one more namespace, system.io. That's for file operations, so we can output the HTML response to a file. So with that done, now we just need to write our logic here. So the first thing I'm going to do is specify an output file. So to do that, I'm going to actually create an output.txt file. So I'm going to go to add, new item, and then in the search bar, I'm going to type in text, and then text file. And I'm going to name this text file output.txt. Next, I need to specify that directory, or the, the location of this output file. So if you right click on the file and then go to copy full path, and then in our class, we can say public static string file output equals at quote, and then you just control V or paste that full file path in between the quotes. Next, we need to write the function that's going to handle the HTTP client. So to do this, we right we need to make a new function uh, it's an asynchronous function and it has to be static as well since our main is static so it's a task of type string and I'm gonna name it call URL and passing a string a string named URL next we create an HTTP client object and then we're going to specify the security point manager. Uh, so this allows us to then specify the security protocol. I've noticed a couple of these actually work, like TLS 1.2, TLS 1.1. I just use TLS. Um, not entirely sure what the difference is between them. I think it's just versions. But I've had success with just using TLS. Then we're going to say um, the default request headers, we're going to clear them. So these are just the headers on the response. And now we want to get our response. So all that we have to say is our client just get string async. So this will return a string of the HTML form, essentially the HTML file of the web page back to this response, back to the response variable. So now all that we want to do is just return the response. And remember, the response is going to be a string in this case. Well, it is a, yeah, the, the response is a string, but it's a task of type string. So you'll see why that comes into play here in a second. So now in our main, we want to, we're going to accept from the user the URL that they want to get the HTML from. So we say console.write, enter the URL that you want an HTML response from. And then we need to read their response into a URL. 
So we say console.readLine. And then we want an awaiter. So this awaiter variable is what's going to hold the task, uh, the task of type string that is the response or the return of call URL. So we need an awaiter. And then we're going to do call URL passing URL. So the way that the awaiter works is we actually want to wait because it's an asynchronous function, right? So that means we don't exactly know when the response is going to come. It's not sequential. So we want to wait our program. We want it to wait until we get a response. And at the time that it has a response, we want to do something, right? So we want to say when the awaiter dot result does not just equal a blank string, we can now write, write all the text to our file output. So the output.txt file and the awaiter's result, which the result is a string in this case, because down here we said get string async, which is going to return it's a task of type string, but right here, the dot result, it is a string. So now, um, basically just to tune up the program a little bit, I'm gonna say write line HTML response output to, and then add the file output. So now I know that I got a response and I output it to some file. So now I can go and look at that response and then just write a line that says press any key to exit and then wait for the user to enter a key. So now I'm going to run this program and I'm actually going to use the URL of the website that I made for my undergraduate capstone. Um, so I will run this and this works pretty well because I know exactly what code I put into this website. So, you know, I'll know that the HTML is correct, but it, it'll always be right. So enter the URL that you want HTML response from. So I'm just going to paste the URL of the site that I wanted and then just press enter. And the HTML response has been output to the output.txt. So I'll exit this and take a look at the output.txt. And here we will see now that we have all of the HTML that I wrote to make that website work. So that pretty much does it for the HTTP client. Uh, this is just a very basic rundown, but with this, you know, you have the fundamentals to get HTML responses within your C Sharp programs, which is a very powerful tool. If you want to get in contact with me with any questions, comments, suggestions, or discussions, please feel free to join my Discord server. The link will be in the description down below. I will also upload this code to a GitHub repository. The link will also be in the description down below. And as always, thanks for watching and stay safe, everybody.